In this video, I'm going to show you how to take this athlete performance data and turn it into this pivot table and chart that you can use to look at your trends over time. This is going to be really powerful as the pivot table will automatically update to include all of your new data to look at any metric that you want. So let's get after it. Okay, we're back and we are starting off with a data table here. And you might recognize this data from the Google Sheets Athlete Dashboard project. But if you haven't seen that series, I would strongly recommend it. It's a six video series where I take you through a blank sheet to creating a fully interactive Google Sheets Athlete Dashboard. And I will link that up in the top right hand corner right now. Now moving on with the project of the day, what we want to do is create a way that we can summarize the data from this table. And in this case, because we're looking at athlete data, I might want to summarize this so that I could look at some team trends over time and maybe look at how each of these metrics were progressing over time. So an easy way to do that is to create what's called a pivot table. And what a pivot table does is it takes a more complex data table and then summarizes it down into more manageable chunks. So we're going to do that with this data here. And in order to do that, all we have to do is go up to the insert tab. And if we scroll down here, there's going to be an option to select a pivot table. And when I click this, um, Google Sheets is pretty smart. It's automatically going to know where my data exists. In this case, it exists from A1 to L46. And it's going to ask me if I want to insert this pivot table on an existing sheet or a new sheet. For the purposes of this video, we're going to do this on a new sheet. But if you wanted to create some sort of project where you wanted all of your pivot tables in one place, you might just want to use an existing sheet and then stick it right beside another one. So let's go with new sheet for now and we'll hit create. And what you're going to notice is that it opens up a new window or a new sheet. And now we have um, some boxes up in the left hand corner. We have our rows down the left hand side and then our columns along the top and then our values um, right underneath the columns. Now, because we're using a pivot table, we can actually define what we want any of these to be. Now on the right hand side here, you're going to see the pivot table editor and Google Sheets has made this pretty easy. I can just now go and click anywhere on here and I will be able to insert any of the metrics from my other data table. So for example, for rows, if I go to add, you can see that all of the names from all of the data in our old data table are here. And in this case, I might want to add the date. And you can see right away, as soon as I click on adding the date, all of the dates that we have are just right down the side here. And it's really easy to see them. And then there is an option to show totals. I'm not going to want any totals in this particular table, so I'm going to turn that off. And the reason that we're going to show the date is because for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how to look at your team trend over time. Now, the next thing is where it's going to show columns and columns might be somewhere that we might want to put our athlete names, for example. So if I go up to columns and I go to add, if we were to put the athlete names, now you can see that we have our athletes along the top and any of the data that we select would go under the appropriate athlete. For example, if I go down to values, and now let's say I want to select counter movement jump. You can see now that athlete one, this is their counter movement on this date, athlete two, athlete three, etc. So that's a, an easy way to do that. And if we were to add more values, say bench press one RM, you can see that it now just takes athlete one and it'll show you their counter movement jump and their bench press on that date. I'm going to remove those two metrics because for this project we don't want the athletes along the top. I'm just going to work on the values. So the next thing that we're going to add in here is just some values and let's for the purposes of this project look at the bench 1RM and I'll add another one, the squat 1RM and you can see when I click here it gives me the option to either see the values as columns or I might want to look at them as rows and when they're in rows each um, metric gets its own row. When I select columns, it will just keep adding them along the top. Now, because this is a table, I can go ahead and I can edit any of these. So I can just call this bench press 
and I can call this squat and it will automatically edit there. Now for our values, when we come back over to our pivot table editor, right now this is taking the sum. So what this is doing is taking all of the bench presses on that day, adding them up and then giving me that number. But maybe we wanna do something else. Maybe I just want a count of how many bench presses were done on that day or how many records were taken. Maybe I want an average. Maybe I want the max bench press from that day, the minimum bench press from that day, the medium, the product, standard deviation, or the variance. For this project, we're gonna do the average because I wanna see what the average of my team's bench press is on each day. And I'm gonna do the same thing for squat. So I'm gonna take the average again. Now, there's a couple other features that we might wanna look at. Over here, you got bench press 1RM. You can show it as um, the percent of the row. So in this case, it would take the bench press and give me a percent of that versus anything else that is in that row. We can do a percent of column where you can see that on this case, this was sort of our um, highest percent and so on and so forth. We might want to look at percent of the grand total, which would take all of the bench presses, add them again, add them together, and then give me a percent of that. I actually just want the value. So I'm going to take these two columns and I'm going to center justify them and I'm going to take some of the decimal places away just to make the numbers a little bit more palatable. Now, because we have this table, the other thing that we can do here is there is an option to filter here down at the bottom right hand corner. I can add a filter and maybe I want to filter by athlete name or by position. So let's say if I wanted to filter by position, I could choose which positions I actually want to see. So let's see, I only want to see the wide receivers um, bench press averages. If I click that, now we only get the wide receiver bench presses. Maybe we want the center and the linebacker. Again, if I click that, all the values change accordingly. So that's an easy way to add a filter, or maybe we want to filter by athlete name. And in this case, we only want to kind of select athlete one or athlete two, et cetera. So we can add different filters to this. And then the final piece to this is if we wanted to visualize this over time, what we could do is actually add a chart. So I could select all of these cells and hit insert. Maybe I want to add a chart. And now we have a representation of our team's average for these two tests over time. And if I were to go back to my pivot table and filter out some of the positions, hang on one sec, if I were to filter out some of the positions, say I wanted to take out the linebacker and the wide receiver, the chart's gonna automatically change to update that. So this is now a super powerful way that we can just keep an eye on team trends for certain tests over time and be able to quickly and easily filter these out to kind of display whatever we want. Now there's two more things that you have to know about this is when, if we go back to our pivot table editor, scroll up to the top, right now this is taking um, data from A1 to L46. So let's see what happens if we add a little bit more data there. So let's take athlete three and I'm just going to copy their data, paste it one below and I'll just change the date to be one higher than that. If we go back to our pivot table, you can see that it hasn't actually updated to reflect that new date. So all I have to do is go back to my data here and I can just change this to L and it will automatically go all the way down and update the data. So now it's taking from A1 all the way to L993, which is, if I was to guess, the last column on this, or sorry, the last row on this actual data sheet. So I could add more dates here. Maybe I want to just scroll this down a couple and scroll athlete three down a couple. And I'm just going to paste in the same sort of values everywhere just so that we can see. And if I go back to my pivot table, you can see now all of the dates are added, but our actual chart hasn't updated. So all I have to do now is just change the range on my chart. So if I double click here and go to setup on my chart, you can see that it's only looking from A1 to C16. Same idea, if I delete that, it's going to know to look all the way down and now we can see all of our data. If I wanted to put any more filters on this, let's say I wanted to filter by date, 
maybe I want to only show, um, maybe I don't only want to show a few different dates. And you can see those are what our tests look like on those dates. So if you've never tried pivot tables before, I encourage you to give them a try as they're a really easy way to start to visualize team trends and data over time. And in a few clicks, you can have something that is really easy to use and workable and you can start to show your data to either your athletes or your coaches. So I hope this video helps you out. If it did, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.